friends and welcome back. Um, we've got one more lesson uh, before we start playing songs and this lesson's in three parts. The first part um, we're going to have a look at some more um, little finger exercises, some uh, riffs that we could play and uh, in part two we're going to go over the note learning. Now this is important, it's only the first stage of note learning but it's very important, don't miss it out. And in the third and final part of the video, we talk about how to um, get motivated and stay motivated, basically. So, you know, there's a lot there, but you don't have to take it all at once. Um, just uh, go through it a bit at a time. It's a video. You can pause it and go back and repeat things. Now, I'm aware that there are people who are following this course who are not particularly tech savvy. or don't know how to use YouTube. If you do know well that's good but for their sake I want to say um, I often refer to um, earlier lessons I'll say if you want to know the details of how to do this such and such a thing then you need to refer to lesson seven so how do you find lesson seven if we're on lesson 14 shall we say well if you go to my name underneath the video and it says super j click on that it'll take you to my channel and all my videos are there so you need to select videos on that channel and there's about 14 uh, train videos at the moment and uh, all the lessons are there and just click on the appropriate lesson very simple and once you get to that lesson you don't need to go through the whole 20 minutes or 30 minutes however long the video is if you look at the description box underneath the video um, there's usually a, a short interrupted sentence with a line of dots uh, describing what's in the video and the word more and if you click on more then a box will open up and all the timings I always put all the timings uh, for the different sections of the video are listed there so if you want to know you know what a G7 chord is then you just look down and it'll say you know eight minutes 47 seconds G7 chord so you just scroll the video along to that time and that's how you can find your way around video. So hope that's clear for everyone. Let's get on with today's lesson. And for those of you who've been following it live, and I know there are some people who are doing that, uh, I just apologize. It's been a little while since the last uh, video. I've had COVID, that's my excuse, and I'm sticking to it. So if you remember the first couple of little practice riffs that we looked at, it was herded through the grapevine and we learned a little bit about damping there and uh, smoke on the water and we learned a bit about double stopping uh, you need to go back to lesson nine if you want to see exactly how to play those in detail and then we looked at uh, black horse and the cherry tree we learned a bit about syncopation there and then we looked at seven nation army and lots of different ways of playing it not just the one that's written there but again you need to go back to lesson 10 if you want to see in detail how to play those tunes and finally we looked at uh, satisfaction and then another one bites the dust and with another one bites the dust we learned a little bit about sweep picking and we're going to need to uh, remember what we learned there a little bit more for the things that we're doing today but again you need to go back to lesson 11 if you want to see those two songs in detail but today we're going to be doing these three little practice riffs all very good finger exercises again and all using skills um, that we've practiced already. So you might want to copy this down and make a screenshot of it, uh, draw it out yourself on a piece of paper, type it out on your own computer, it could be useful, uh, up to you to decide. Okay well the first little practice riff is going to be uh, <clears throat> from the uh, Man Who Sold The World, Nirvana's version. And you'll see a couple of things there that we haven't seen before. That little second to third fret uh, with an H above it, that's a hammer on. And then third back to second is uh, with a P below it is a pull off. So we haven't met those two things before. And uh, I'll show you what we mean by that just now. Okay, well, you might want to use a, a heavy pick for this. Good for grabbing the strings with it's We want to a thin pick when we're strumming but we want a nice thick heavy pick when we're picking or you can use it your finger if you wish 
but in any case we address the third string at the second fret as close behind the second fret as we can using my first finger and I'm playing three down picks if you like then taking my finger off and letting the string ring out open and then I'm touching the string very lightly with my finger just to stop it ringing out any longer I'm not making a note, I'm just touching it lightly. Then I'm pressing on, this is quite tricky to do. Then I'm pressing on, playing the string once and hammering this finger down so I get a second note. So I just pick it once and then I flick it off. So that's called a hammer on and then that's called a pull off. So I'm getting three notes with one pick and then I play the string open again to finish the little riff and it starts again. And finishing on the second fret of the third string. Some useful little skills to learn there. And now the next tune is from um, Eye of the Tiger, the main theme uh, by Survivor. And uh, in this one, we're going to learn something about power chords. You can play it on one string, but it's better played on two or even three strings. And uh, we'll have a look at that just now. Okay, well, we'll start with the one string version, which isn't really quite right. But again, I've got my fingers hovering over the fifth fret. That's my ring finger and the third fret is my first finger and I'm playing five, five, three, five, five, three, five, five, open, one. So that's all the frets on the bass string. And when you want to finish back up to the fifth fret again. If we want it to sound a little bit more like the record sort of thing then we need to play power chords and the power chord there's a whole section about power chords later on in the course so don't worry about it for now. Um, just to say that we put our first finger exactly where it was before but now we put our ring finger on the next string so that's the fifth string and two frets higher so we're on fret five and fret seven. And that, those spacings remain the same wherever we move our first finger, this finger stays two frets up on the next string. So that would be when it's on one and that would be when it's on zero. So we play something like this. Now we've been doing quite a lot of um, hard rock and metal, even a bit of soul, but um, we'll be doing every genre of music in the course. We'll be doing blues and reggae and uh, country music, you name it. <clears throat> so um, be patient, whatever your preference is. Um, but here's one for the country music fans. And this is just the little theme that they play um, at the end of the the chorus in this song, Ring of Fire, it's Johnny Cash song, well known as anyway, and uh, there are the chords below it. You don't know those chords yet, but when you do, you can come back to them and use those in the song. Anyway, I'll show you how this goes. It's a fun little thing to do, and we use our sweep picking technique again. Okay, so again, um, it's useful to be able to sort your fingering out, and I'm gonna play on the second string here, and I'm going to play at that third fret. And um, when I need to go to the open string, I just lift my finger off and use my first finger at the first fret. So first finger, first fret, third finger at the third fret. Easy to remember. Then we go. So I went down, up, 
down, up, down, and that's our sweet picking. Don't try and play it, because you won't be able to get the rhythm. It's down, up, down, up, down. Then we play the top string open. I'm taking my hand off just so you can see it. You don't want to take your hand off. Then back onto the first fret of the second string with our first finger, and back to where we started, the third fret. And then the second part, we're just playing that string open. And again, down, up, down, up, down, first fret, second fret of the third string, and I'm using my middle finger. And then play that second string open again. So you just follow it on the tab there. Hopefully you can see that adding all those little uh, twiddly bits to your songs is going to greatly improve them and they're good finger exercises too. But we'll move on to the second part of the video and that is uh, note learning. Now I always encourage everyone to go up and down the strings saying the notes just A, B, C, D, E, F and G, not the sharps and flats um, at the beginning of each session. And uh, if you don't know how to do that, you need to go back to lesson seven which shows you what the notes are on the bass string and also tells you how to rehearse them. But we did the fifth, fourth, third and second string too, but we uh, didn't do the top string. However, the top string is the same as the bass string. Elephants and donkeys grow big ears, they're both A. So to just finish off doing the top string, we just need to play it open and say E, put our finger at the first fret and say F, it goes two frets to G, then we're at the end of our musical alphabet, two frets to A, we're starting again, two frets to B, one to C, of course, two to D, and two to E. And then we're at the 12th fret, we're at the same note that we started at, low E and high E, an octave up. So all that was explained in great detail in video seven, what an octave is as well. Um, and once we've got there, then we need to go back down. We'll find that saying the alphabet backwards is a little bit more difficult, but it helps to program it in. So we want to go E, D, C, B, A, G, F, and E again. Just have to remember that E to F is one note, B to C is one note. All the others are two notes, two frets, two steps, two semitones, however you like to look at it. Um, all that again was explained earlier, if you know that already. Um, so now we've covered the notes on all six strings. Now the next stage is going to be, we're going to have a little quiz and we're going to see how much of this is sunk in. So what I would invite you to do is I'm going to call out a note and play that note and I want you to have a, 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 a guess, I suppose a guess you want you to say uh, what note it is that I'm playing. Feel free, pause the video and then come back and see if you were right. This will be a useful exercise for you to do. So if I played on the first string at the 13th fret, what note would I be playing? Pause the video, come back in a moment and I'll let you know what if you were right. <laughs> and it was an F because if we start from E, and we go up one step, we get F. Well, when we get to the 12th fret, we're back to E again. So obviously the 13th fret, everything just repeats. E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, and so on. Okay, now try this one. The third string at the 10th fret. Pause the video, see if you have a guess at that. Okay, now that note was F again. 
was a lower F, but it was it was F. And what you probably did, or what a lot of people do, is they start counting up and go, well, we know this is G, so therefore, oh, that would be A, B, C, and they laboriously work their way all the way up the fingerboard. But the shortcut is to say, well, if the open string's G, then the 12th fret is also G. So it's easier to go just down two steps than to go all the way up a step at a time. So if that's G, two steps down, is F, the, note, the letter be in the, the alphabet before G is F, so that's F. So that's the easy way to do it. Remember to start from the 12th fret, not from the bottom when we're up here. Okay, and we'll try this one. And this is the fourth string at the 15th fret, so 12, 13, 14, 15. Fourth string at the 15th fret. Pause the video, <clears throat> have a guess. See if you can figure out what that is. And yes, it's F again. Now, what's the quick way of working this out? Well, again, don't go all the way up, but think of it like this. If we were playing a D, fourth string open, we went up two frets, we'd get E. We went up one fret, we'd get F. So with three frets up from the D note, D, E, F. So in the same way, D, E, F. So that's 12, 14, 15. So the same thing that applies down here, applies up there. Okay, so how are you getting on so far? Okay, three more to do. The fourth string, again, but this time at the seventh fret. So it's not F this time, if the third fret would be F, the 15th fret would be F, but this is the seventh fret. Pause the video, see if you can figure out what that is. And it's an A, so you could easily count up if you wanted to do that. It's D, E, F, G, end of the musical alphabet, A. So open two, three, five, and we get to seven. It's an A note. Okay, now here's a couple of tricky ones just to finish with. Um, and it's the first string at the sixth fret. Now you're gonna to need to think about this one. Pause the video again, have a think, and see if you can figure it out. Okay, now I know we didn't do sharps and flats, but we should know that this is an A the fifth fret and this is a B at the seventh fret so we've got a note in between A and B so we've either sharpened A up or we've flattened B down we can sharpen A up or we flat I say B flat we flatten B down so it's B flattened down but not as far as A so we I would call that note B flat if you wanted to call it A sharp I wouldn't argue with you but it's B flat to me and uh you just need to know it's the note between A and B. Okay, and uh, one more, and again, this might be a little bit of a tricky one. It's the second string, second string at the second fret. Pause the video again, see if you can figure out what that is. Okay, and this time it's the note that's in between C B, C, D, the note that's in between C and D. So is it C sharp or is it D flat? Well, I wouldn't argue with you either way. I call it C sharp, but if you want to call it D flat, that's fair enough. If it's the note in between, it's C sharpened up, but not as far as D, or D flattened down, but not as far as C, so C sharp. Okay, and if you've got all those, you're doing pretty well. Now, there's another stage. Well, there's another two stages. Well, actually, come to think of it, there's another three stages <laughs> that we want to move on to in our note learn. But that's the basic thing. Um, so just keep rehearsing those notes up and down, and we'll see um, how we're going to move on next time. All right, so for the third and final part of this video, I'm going to have a look at this it's very important six ways to get motivated and stay motivated. And I would 
I advise you to copy this down, keep it right in the front of your file. Especially at the moment, we haven't actually covered any songs yet. We will be doing that the very next lesson. Um, but at the moment, your motivation could be flagging. So this is a very useful thing to do. Um, and can I just say, I know I tend to cover a lot in one video. Uh, I wouldn't do this much if it was face-to-face, one-to-one lessons. But, um, you know, it's a video, so you can just uh, take the parts that you want and you can come back to it and arrange that yourself. So just put plenty in, but don't try and do it all at once. Uh, well, the first thing might seem a bit obvious, but it's good sometimes to remember why did we want to learn to play music in the first place. Um, you listen to the music and songs that inspire you and you'll feel, well, I want to play that. And be motivated to put in the effort because it is an effort. Um, that's required to, to get to where you want to be. Um, keep reminding yourself what the uh, object of the exercise is while we're going through the motions. Now the second uh, point is very important. We talked about this at the beginning of the course. If you put your guitar away, if you put it in its case, put it in the cupboard, um, you, the time will never be right to get it out. And you need to practice little and often so you need to have your guitar on a stand by your favourite chair somewhere where you can just grab it from time to time for a few minutes. Um, if it's an electric guitar and you need to have it plugged in, then have it in the amp. All right, the amp switched off, but the, but the cables are all connected, just ready to switch on. Um, you can keep your tuner and your capo clipped onto the head of the guitar. Keep a pick sort of uh, slotted into the strings. We showed this in one of the earlier videos. Um, Keep that little practice space there. And if you have a music stand with some sheet music on it, then it's all there. That's your practice corner. Set it up in some room um, where you can just quickly go and grab it without any effort to get anything out. Two minutes, and put it away again. Uh, that way you'll practice little and often. And uh, that is the best way to learn. Now, I appreciate you probably already have a guitar, but um, a lot of people have bought a very cheap, uh, nasty guitar on the grounds that, um, well, if they don't take to it, um, then at least they haven't wasted any money. But that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. If you've got a guitar that doesn't sound good, doesn't look good, you won't be motivated to play um, and uh, you won't take to it. So um, if you've done that, then I would really encourage you to save up if it's time for someone to buy you a present, whatever it is. Buy a guitar that looks cool. This is not about posing. It really is motivating. That sounds good to you. Buy something that uh, uh, gives you pleasure when you play it and you'll want to play it. It sounds very simple, but it's a big mistake that a lot of people make um, buying a cheap and nasty guitar. And it's one of the reasons that uh, a lot of people do give up. Now, there's some advice about uh, buying guitars and uh, amplifiers if, if that's if you're buying an electric in uh, the very first lesson so go and check that out if you need some help otherwise uh, message me with something that you're thinking about buying and uh, I'll be happy to give you my opinion. Now point number four this is useful um, if you don't actually have a teacher um, you normally if you're going for lessons one-to-one -one with a teacher you will be motivated to practice just uh, so that you're not embarrassed <laughs> by the fact that you haven't uh, found time to do any practice. Um, but if you can find someone else um, who's also learning or someone who can take an interest in your um, development, that's good, that's motivated, that keeps your, your practice time up. Um, even if it's on another instrument, if you maybe get together with someone uh, once a week or once a fortnight or something, uh, just to have a jam, um, it's very motivating and uh, jamming with somebody else. I mean, music is for sharing. Uh, it's great to play on your own, but it's at least 10 times better um, if you're playing with other people. So if you can find a, a, a practice buddy, uh, especially on guitar, but even with another instrument, um, this is going to be really useful and really fun. Now, of course, we do have busy lives. It's not always motivating. To practice especially when all we've got is a few chord changes and a couple of rhythm patterns uh, to practice it seems a bit pointless a bit aimless um, 
possibly even a bit boring but what we need to do and we'll do this next time is uh, pick a simple song that we like or a couple of songs even better um, and practice those chord changes and very simple strumming patterns I'll show you how to do this um, in the context of those songs this is really motivating uh, we pick a different song from time to time and mix that up with picking some of the uh, simple single string riffs that we've been looking at in the videos video earlier today um, and then we're actually playing music and not just uh, uh, playing exercises uh, we'll look at that next time and finally and this can be a bit daunting um, try to play for other people I'm not talking about getting up in public or going out busking although I used to do that when I first started playing guitar and I knew very little um, but people still thought it was good because you've got to remember people don't know anything about music um, so don't worry anyway what people think about your guitar skills they're not interested in technical skills it's about expressing something expressing who you are through a song it can be a very simple uh, a chord sequence a very simple strumming pattern very simple techniques that you're employing um, but you're presenting a song um, so you know don't be put off because you think you know you're not going to win the x factor with that we're not interested in that you're a guitar player we don't compare ourselves with anybody else and you'll be surprised you it'll be well received and this is a big uh, growth factor um, gives you a lot of confidence uh, and it's really motivating again playing for other people is um, a great learning stage to do and I think one good side effect of it is it make, really makes you get down to uh, work on something out instead of just noodling about and fiddling around uh, getting down to, to, to putting some structure on uh, what it is that you're practicing okay well just a couple of things to say um, I've decided to abandon the uh, guess the tune competition uh, this will be the last one and if you don't know this one then you've probably been uh, on a moon <laughs> in orbit around a different planet for the last 40 years um, but I haven't had much of a response in fact I think there's only one person who ever bothers to have a guess so um, and I'm also going to abandon the uh, the closing joke idea. I haven't had any response to that at all. So I don't know if everybody's uh, happy with it, <laughs> cheesed off about it or whatever. Um, or just to say, we will be playing songs next time on Gov. So um, just keep up the practice in the meantime and uh, be patient. We'll get there. This is where the fun starts. Okay, see you guys. Thanks for watching. Bye now.